Welcome to the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of December 12, 2016. Right now in the Solid Signal studios in our West Coast offices, they're mixing cement outside, so it's an interesting opportunity to see how well this noise-canceling microphone that I got actually works. I guess I'll find out after I listen to the whole podcast back. Anyway, noise and sound is really the big story on the Solid Signal podcast this week and goes a little off topic because I, I think I've earned that. I think I've been on topic trying to earn money for a couple of weeks. So this week I want to talk a little bit about music. The world of music has changed again. I mean, changes come kind of in, in waves and it's gone from, you know, you'd listen to stuff on the radio and go down and buy a 45 to you really couldn't buy stuff on singles, so you felt justified recording it onto your friendly cassette deck into making mixtapes, audio CDs, MP3s, and now it seems like the transition to subscription music is almost complete. It's been going on for a couple of years now, but more and more, I hear of people saying, I just don't bother to buy music anymore. I just subscribe to Spotify or Google Play Music or Pandora or Apple Music or what have you. And that's good enough for me. Basically, what you're doing is you're going back to kind of the model of getting it on the radio, except that it's on demand and you're paying for it. At the end of the day, you don't own anything. You only own your ability to listen to that particular library. This isn't new. As a matter of fact, a company called Rhapsody was doing this about 11 years ago and their service failed largely because download speeds just weren't up to it in those days and you couldn't really stream to your phone back in 2006. It just wasn't a possibility. But today all that technology is here and I have to wonder a couple of things. First of all, is it okay that we're moving to a basically rental model for music instead of an ownership model? For all media, actually, but let's talk about music. And second of all, is it fair to say that popular music is essentially dead? So let's start with the first one. First of all, I do think it's okay that we're basically moving to a rental model when it comes to music. I think that there was a time when I was younger when your music collection was a bit of a point of pride, when what you owned was a point of pride, but then again, the only way you could listen to something on demand was if you owned it. And so you'd spend thousands of dollars on an album collection, and you would treasure that because it was the only way you would hear songs that you actually liked. I totally get that. But today, it really isn't necessary. And when it comes right down to it, even if you're paying 6 $7 a month for streaming music, then you're probably paying less than you would have been paying to buy full CDs or records in the old model. The bummer, of course, is that it's gone when you stop subscribing to it. And But then I also think about, in my younger days, did I ever, for example, covet somebody's record collection and, you know, wish some of my older relatives would bequeath me records? Very rarely. Uh, if you're all about new music, and a lot of people are when they're young, subscription makes a lot of sense. Ownership does not. And I understand there are some cases where ownership is going to continue to work, but for the most part, subscription is where it is. Uh, it's just an evolution of the way we consume media, and while I don't like paying a monthly charge for something, i got to say if you look at it on a yearly basis, like I said, it does, it does kind of pencil out. Now the, the other question, which is, is popular music dead? Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I am not 18 years old. I think you all figure that out by now. And I don't think today's popular music is terribly good. I think it's just mostly thump, thump, thump and repeating a lot of syllables that don't make sense to me. I understand that to a lot of people this is good stuff, but I'm pretty sure there was a record about six, seven months ago where... Uh, the, the the woman singing just kept saying, wubby, wubby, whir, 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 whir. I don't know what that means. Anyway, it occurs to me in any given year, there are really only maybe five to six good songs, and yet there are probably 200 songs that are released. And so you can look at the whole of the last hundred years and say, oh, look at all that great music, but really just five to six good songs per year on average. Of course, 1966, 1967 was a little bit of an aberration. Anyway, at the risk of running a bit long, I'd just like to finish by saying that 
I have given today's popular music a chance because I know the comments, the commenters out there are going to say, oh, give popular music a chance. I have given popular music a chance, and it is not to my taste, although I recognize it does take an awful lot of work. If it happens to be to your taste, that's great because, going back full circle, you can now subscribe to something like Spotify and get that popular music more easily than ever before. Just make sure you save a little bit of extra money to shop at Solid Signal. You know, folks, I had to do that. Anyway, that's about it for me for the week, and uh, have a great one, and I'll be looking forward to talking to you again soon.